So now that we are about a month and a half into this new format, I thought it'd be fun to talk about some mid-format banlist thoughts and what we might see looking forward ahead onto the next banlist. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Now that we have some better lighting, hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AVRLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1100 ladder. Over 1,130 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen, I can't handle it. I cannot handle the pressure of the audience. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for all your support. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I wanna talk about some mid-format bandless thoughts that I kinda of have rattling around in my peanut-sized brain. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because really this format is just so much fucking better than Tier Zero Tier Element. I've had people tell me Avery last format was so much more fun. It was a lot better. And you know, the, I feel like that those are the same people who enjoy formats like 2013 Dragon Ruler Tier Zero format when it was either you played Dragon Ruler Spellbook, maybe you could get away with Evil Swarm. I, other than that, you were getting screwed, pimp. Um, I just personally don't really care for tier zero formats. I've tried playing the tier zero decks like Zodiac, Necroz, and I'd always get my butthole destroyed. Then I waltz on in with fucking Trickstar when that first came out, and I come in 18th place at a regional deck profiles on the channel. It's like seven years old. I'm sure you can find it. But um, I want to talk about, you know, what it is that we could see on this ban list and just things I'm seeing through testing and playing Cash Tira, even though I'm playing one of the best decks of the format. I still see things that need to be hit. Don't worry, I'm not going to say something like Nibiru because Nibiru is really an equalizer. And I would say, this might be a bit of a hot take, but I would say that it's almost the equivalent of like the TCG version of Max C, even though the OCG also has a Nibiru. I feel that TCG is sort of that equilibrium where it's like the, the TCG, uh, Konami of the TCG looks at the TCG and says, they don't have Max C, but they've got Nibiru. And I so I feel like that that's kind of the equilibrium there. But I got to say, ladies and gentlemen, I do feel like evenly match, that card's got to be taken out back and shot. Ever since Circuit Break came out, I have been thinking that that card just needed to be fucking banned. And it's getting to the point now where like literally every single deck is either maining or siding three copies of evenly match. And the biggest problem with evenly match is not even what it does. It's the fact that it's not a hard once per fucking turn. I cannot tell you how many times over the years since Circuit Break came out, we got evenly match that like I use solemn judgment if I'm like playing Flunderies to negate an evenly match. And then my opponent has just a big old shit eating grin and they drop down another evenly match. And it's like, you're fucked just for playing the out. Like you side deck in things like Solemn Judgment or Cross Out Designator to stop the evenly. That's kind of a bad example because it negates it for the turn. But you get what I mean. Like you side deck in something like Solemn or you put out an Omni Negate to stop the evenly match. And then they just say, fuck you with another evenly. Like it's either going to out negates that have to be played to save their board or it's going to like just blow away their board. Like I've seen so many replays and I've had it happen to me so many times or like I've seen it on like Yu-Gi-Oh! live streams where like the first evenly comes down and it gets negated. I'm like, does he have the second evenly? He's got the second evenly. I've even seen situations where people open three fucking evenlies, ladies and gentlemen. So it's just evenly negate, evenly negate. The third evenly match comes down. They're just like, Card's fucking broken. <laughs> like, you, you can't do anything. Like, you end up getting punished for playing outs. And I think that that's so bullshit. The card either needs to go to two or it needs to go to one so that you can't just slap one down after the other. You know, at least with something with Nibiru, if you negate it, you know that you're good for the turn because it's a you can only use this effect once per turn. It's not a non once per turn like evenly. And so I feel like, especially too, since everybody is playing three evenly, that Konami will in some way, shape or form hit the card. Um, other than that, the other things, like if you saw my uh, balance discussion with the previous format, I talked about how things like terraforming, instant fusion should be banned, you know, things like that. I'll save that for more like closer to May uh, with an actual balance discussion. Um, but I do think that things like that should still happen to a degree. Um, the Ishizu Fairies I still think should be fucking banned. Like, there's only two decks right now in this format that aggravate me to hell and back. And that's Labyrinth and Naturia fucking Runic. Naturia Runic has no business being as good at it as it is. Like, between the Naturia engine, the Runic engine, and then the four fucking Ishizu Fairies. Like, 
I don't blame Nachuria itself for being as good as it is, even though Mole Cricket and Camilla are busted and should, I feel, somewhere down the line, Yugi's history be hit or just fucking ban Beast or Barkeon, whatever. Like, the consistency that that deck has, and granted, it does take a high-level skilled player, or a highly skilled player, excuse me, to effectively pilot the deck and do well with it. But the Ashizu Fairies granting the amount of, I would argue, consistency that the deck gets. Like, milling multiple Sacred Trees is fucking dumb off of a Kelbeck or an Aigido, or ditching it off of Hugin, like, whatever. And the Sacred Tree is not once per fucking turn. Like... Konami needs to crack down on these cards that are not hard once per turns, and I wouldn't even say like a rat of them, because I don't want to hurt like the, how the card was intentionally meant to function. You know, just because we're in a new era of Yu-Gi-Oh! where things that aren't once per turn are more easily abusable, you shouldn't rat at the card. I think it should go to fucking one, though. Like, no, I don't think anyone can argue that chaining, or not chaining, but triggering multiple sacred trees in the same turn is just fucking idiotic. Like, it is not healthy in the slightest. Like, I I would rather deal with Cash Tira, like, just blocking up my zones than a Naturia player getting multiple surges. And if you're the idiot who just ashes the sacred tree, hoping that that works, then they're either going to sunflower you to hell and back, just shove a big old sunflower up your butt, hope you don't got allergies or else it's going to itch, or they're just going to go, okay, cool, I'll just do another sacred tree. Oh, those didn't go off. Let me go ahead and use Keldeo and Medora and just shuffle that shit back. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and make a Coral Dragon, send it off, make a Baron or what the fuck ever, the Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend shit. Uh, okay, that's in the grave. So now Coral Dragon is going to let me draw because that's not a once per turn either. Like, someone take me out back and just gouge my eyes out, please, because this deck just like instantly puts me on tilt. Like literally anyone that plays that deck, if they're playing it, it instantly puts me on tilt. You're playing Labyrinth, that instantly puts me on tilt. Like, <clears throat> I hate the card so much. Like, right now I'm side decking through World Decree, mostly to just out evenly because it's a bitch of a card, but also to beat down the Labyrinth and the Trap Trick decks because those decks are just toxic AF. I love the fact that Trap Trick is very budget this format, but I hate the fact that it's just so damn good. Um, also, Pot of Prosperity, that card needs to either go to two or to one. The fact that uh, cutting the damage in half is not in any way a drawback to the card and the fact that you can't draw like you're probably not drawing any fucking way like it doesn't matter so like especially in cash tira like when you look at their extra decks people are playing garua goliath ints you name it because they know that they're going to banish that shit off of prosperity and once they establish the arise heart they can start attaching those as materials and gain pluses off of those cards like if you eliminate the arise heart and they have an ints and a garua well ints is going to pop a card on your board if you were dumb enough to commit something to the field uh or you were forced to commit something to your board to out the arise heart like there's nothing wrong with that you get punished for outing the arise heart which is idiotic and then you have the garua that's going to let them draw a card and god forbid that they have a fucking goliath with it so you can't even like raigeki dark hole whatever like you get punished for outing the card that is actively hurting you. And I, I don't think, even as a cash tier player, I do not think that that's healthy. I should not have a 3,000 attack and defense walking, talking macro that can detach three that isn't even a punishment because you're just going to get those materials back to banish a card. And then also like it can't be destroyed by card effects because of Goliath. <clears throat> to me, that's just <clears throat> abusing prosperity for more than what it was intended for. Because, you know, the banishing of the three or six was supposed to be a punishment, especially if you would lied on your extra deck. And if you have the gas in your opening hand, like especially if you're like going second, to crack an opponent's board, you're going to break their board with Zeus, whatever, or you're going to like break their board, swing for like, let's say 3,000 damage. Then in main phase two, you can still go, okay, cool, prosperity, banish six, get like an Ash Blossom so that if the opponent draws to one card in hand or even two, you're instantly eliminating one card from their hand as an issue because you have the Ash, which is just, it makes it impossible to break the Cash Tira board or any opponent's board, no matter what deck they're playing, as long as it involves prosperity. You know, we, we see Master Shits, as dog water of a game as that is, have prosperity at two. The OCG has prosperity at two. So... I don't think it's very far-fetched to say that something like Prosperity could go to two or to one to not only hurt consistencies of the deck, but also to kind of hinder people from really wanting to commit to those generic cards in their extra deck that do fuck all because ain't no cash, excuse me, ain't no cashier deck playing Super Poly to make a Garua. And it would kind of hinder them, especially if it's like at one, where are they really going to play those cards in their extra deck for a fucking one of 
just to hopefully get it, or they have to commit to like using thrust, going second to get it into their hand, banish the sixth, and then get one of six to either start their engine or to get a card that can break your board or to get something like a hand trap if they've already broken your board just to have it in their hand like, ha ha, you ain't doing shit, bitch. So these are just my initial thoughts with the format so far. You know, oh, also Runic Tip still needs to go to one. Um, like I said, I'm going to save a lot of my other things for like a actual balance discussion video near the end of the format when we get Cyberstorm access in May. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.